Hello and welcome, I am Folygon, and today we're gonna to be looking at some secret ZBrush features. Specifically, some secret ZBrush features involving our transpose line. That old thing? Yes, the old school transpose line. I know we now have that brand new shiny 3D gizmo, and I do love that, and I love the ability to come in here and use all these deformers, but Specifically, the transpose line has a lot of hidden functionality that I think a lot of people aren't really aware of. And we're going to look at some of those today, and maybe I can convince you of why the transpose line I think is the superior choice. Let me know down in the comments if you agree, but let's go ahead and get started. The first feature, really not too much of a secret, but just because I want to point it out so no one yells at me in the comments for not mentioning it, if you click and drag out a transpose line and you look up here in the top left hand corner, there's quite a bit of information kind of going on in there. But the real one that we really want to pay attention to is the units. The units are actually the distance from one point of the transpose line to the other. So you can actually use this for measuring an object. This cube on screen is a two units cubed cube. Amazing, I know. Uh, and with using another kind of general functionality of the transpose line, we can snap to vertices. And I'm going to snap from one vertice to another up here, and we'll see that our units are reading about two units right up here. Another feature that you probably already know about is that you can click this inner white circle to snap your transpose line to the center of any object. Align your transpose line at a specific angle and hold the control key and then click that white circle and your camera will rotate to match that angle. This not only works from just the front view here, but it also works from any number of crazy angles. The transpose line can not only snap to vertices, but it can actually snap to the normal of your object as well. Let's look at something a little bit more dense so that we can see that in practice. Because ZBrush doesn't exactly remember the dimensions or rotations of your original object at its world axis, uh, we can use the transpose line, rotate, snap to a vertice, rotate our camera to the angle that we want to fix our rotation at, hold shift and click that endpoint, and just rotate a little bit, and we'll snap right back to where we want to be. This also works on objects that are a little bit more crazy. It just takes a little bit more TLC. And of course, if your object is floating somewhere off in space and you don't know where it is, you can always bring that back under Tool, Geometry, Position, and just type in a few zeros here. If you're having trouble getting your transpose line to snap to a specific vertice, Go up into your preferences under transpose and adjust the maximum snap distance of your transpose line. Setting this higher will make it easier for it to snap to a specific vertice. All right, let's move on to, well, move, I guess. Uh, the first one that we're gonna look at is stretching. Now, of course, we can click and drag out our transpose line and click that middle option to move our object all around the screen. Amazing, I know. But did you know that if you click and drag on that endpoint, you can skew, stretch, or squash your object. This is also extremely helpful if you hold the shift key, then you can align it on the specific axis of your transpose line. Using move, you can control click and drag on the middle circle to copy your object, as long as it doesn't have subdivision levels. You can move along the axis of your transpose line perfectly by holding the shift key. Instead of holding Control and Shift and switching over to a number of the different clip brushes available in ZBrush, you can use your transpose line. Using the Move function, click and drag out your transpose line and click that top circle. This also works on more complex objects. Do understand though that this is a clip brush and the clip brush functionality squishes your geometry up directly. If you'd like to get a nice clean slice, I recommend using the Slice Curve Brush. Instead of clicking to clip your object, you can also click and drag to clip. Within the 3D gizmo, if you click on the gear icon, there is a deformer called the Bend Curve Deformer. I love this deformer, but did you know that with the transpose line, you can actually use a similar function? Drag out a transpose line, 
hold the Alt key and click on your middle circle here. And you can actually do a bend deformer and make your cube dance a little bit. And here's what that looks like on something a little bit more complex. I love the deformation palette in ZBrush. Specifically, I really like the inflate feature. But did you know that you could use that with your transpose line? Using the move function, if you right click on your endpoint, you can inflate an object. And by clicking and dragging in, you can deflate an object. Just for fun, and because it's always terrifying, let's inflate our face a little bit. While move is active, you can alt click on your endpoint to skew your object with a little bit of a gradient effect. Similar to the bend curve function, the beginning of your transpose line won't be as affected as the end. With rotate active, if you alt click your middle selection here, you'll get a rotate that only affects the middle and slowly gradates out the selection towards your endpoints. You get a similar effect if you alt click the endpoint here and rotate only a little bit on the end. Everybody knows that you can rotate an object with your transpose line. And some people know that you can hold shift to snap and rotate your object on a specific number of degrees. But did you know that you can change the number of snaps that occur? If you go into your preferences under transpose rotation steps, if you hold the control key here, and actually if you do this for anything in ZBrush, ZBrush will give you some more information on that object. It says if set to 10, the transpose line will snap to every 36 degrees of rotation. Well, actually that's not quite true. Uh, this is saying that 360 divided by whatever number you put here is how many steps will rotate. The truth is that it's actually 90 divided by whatever you put here. So by default, this number should be set to 4, which means that when I hold shift and rotate, this should snap to 90 divided by 4 degrees, which is 22 and a half degrees. If I come in here and set this number to something like 9, that means that this line will snap to every 10 degrees. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. Here's one that I recommend never using. If you have scale active, you can click and squash your object uh, by clicking on that middle circle. Just be aware that when you do this, it actually scales it a little bit in your other uh, axes as well. You can hold alt and click on any of these circles to scale as well, and that will affect more towards that area of the transpose line than the other two portions of the circle. You can also hold control, click, and scale an object, and that will also duplicate it. I never recommend using this feature. It's pretty useless. Have you ever been working on something that goes across the symmetrical axis, something like these arms here? If I were to try scaling these arms up, you'll see that the objects actually not only scale and grow up, but they also push away from the mirrored axis, which happens to be the x-axis currently. So if I scale up, they go out and grow larger. And if I scale in, they shrink and go towards the central axis here. So to fix that, we can turn on local symmetry. And the next time we scale, they will stay in the same spot and scale up locally around themselves. The last little ZBrush secret feature that I'm going to show you uh, doesn't actually involve the transpose line. Consider it a, a bonus secret. Everyone knows that you can right click to rotate around your 3D model. But did you know that if you hold shift, start rotating the camera, and then let go of shift, you will rotate the object in a whole new way that most people don't even know is possible. This locks the camera and rotates it on the axis that you are facing. Uh, you can also do this from any awkward angle as well. If you guys want more awesome ZBrush content, check out gumroad.com slash Folygon. I have courses, brushes, materials, and even base meshes like the one I used during this tutorial. That's it for this one. Hopefully you guys learned something new. Maybe I convinced you a little bit on the transpose line, and I will see you in the next video or on my live stream. Have a great day.